Welcome to the first part of this video tutorial series on animation trees in UDK. In this video tutorial series, we'll be going over the basics of creating animation trees to get a character fully functional in game. In the later tutorials, we'll also be exploring some advanced concepts, including the creation of custom nodes and how to interface with the animation tree through code. Note that this series does assume that you have basic knowledge of UDK. I won't be going over any of the basic editor functionality. And also, just so you know, I'm running with a second monitor on this PC, so if you see any windows disappearing or my cursor disappear from the screen, then that's the reason why. If you guys have got your own custom character model and animations already in-game, I recommend that you follow along using those. Otherwise, you can download the supplementary package that's been provided on my website, www.wraith.com, or hopefully anywhere that this video tutorial has been linked. So the first thing we'll do is create our animation tree. Open up the content browser and just navigate to your package. I've got one here called Eternal Crisis Characters and my default animation tree here. So when you open up your blank animation tree you'll see something similar to what I've got here. Now on the left we've got the preview which will set up to show a character mesh. Here we have the workspace which is where we create our actual tree and down the bottom here we've got the properties window which shows the properties of the various nodes we've got selected. Uh, pretty much the controls here are the same as the Material Editor or Kismet if you've used either of those. So the first thing we'll go ahead and do is set up uh, our Mesh and Animation set that we want to use for the preview. Uh, just note that this doesn't set it up to work in game, this is only for the preview and the animation tree. You'll need to code your animation tree and animation set in your pawn class. So we'll go Preview Mesh List, add a new object and expand here and we'll select the preview scale mesh and I have a skeletal mesh here, I'll just drag so it's my other screen, select my skeletal mesh from my package and you'll see when we add it in we see it in the preview window here and we'll do a similar thing for the anim set list so we'll add a new one and add a new preview anim set and I'll just select mine from the editor and you can see at the top here we've got our preview animation set and our, all, our, all our mesh details up here. I haven't named them so you won't see anything here. Um, the ability to add multiple meshes and animation sets is useful if you're using the same animation tree across multiple characters. This node that you see here is called our root animation node. Similar to the root material node in the material editor, all the details of the animations get fed back to this node to determine the final blended animation to get played. The final blended animation is determined by the various nodes that we have in our tree and how we've configured those to blend with each other. Basically the idea is that a percentage of each animation will get taken as it goes through the tree and they will all get combined back in the root node to form the finally blended animation. For instance if we have walking forwards and strafing sideways they can get blended together to form a directional running animation if we're going you know, forwards and left for instance in a diagonal direction. So what we're going to do in this first tutorial is just basically add our walking animations. So we'll right click, add a new animation node and we are looking for a UT Anim Blend by Idle. Now you'll see here that we have uh, two inputs here, Idle and Moving, which we'll use to add our Idle animations and obviously our walking animations. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is the Idle We'll create a new animation sequence, anim node sequence, and if we select this one here, the anim seek name property here we set basically to the name of the animation that we want to get played by this sequence, which is in my case EC female idle. And now we hook these up here and hook that one up there, and you'll see instantly that our character over here has changed to be in the first frame of this idle animation. Now this animation actually isn't playing. If you see at the bottom here we have a bunch of properties, the first one here being playing. Uh, if we check that, make this animation play by default, you'll see that this character is, oh my bad, playing, there we go. You'll see this anim character is moving around a little bit. The other thing we need to do is set this to looping as well, so that our animation will play and loop. As you can see we have this little black bar here which is the, the time of the animation as it's going through at the start and the end. And you can see our character is moving around slightly here. Uh, we have a bunch of other properties here 
<coughs> in this animation node sequence. Uh, a vast majority of them we won't have to worry about for now, they'll be explained in later tutorials. Um, you can see this one here, current time, is actually kind of an important one. Um, it's the amount of time, or the, the current uh, part of the animation uh, that is being played at the moment. So if we just uh, select this halfway through, for instance, you can see that our current time is 1.9 seconds. Um, occasionally, this current time, for whatever reason, might get set to something larger than the length of the animation. If this is the case, you may actually encounter some issues when you try to play it in-game. So, <coughs> always make sure that the current time, if the animation's not being played, is set to zero, or else you're going to run into some various issues. Uh, now the next thing we'll do is add a new animation node, directional, and in blend directional. This is the node that allows it to blend between four different movement directions. We've got forward, backwards, left, and right. Now we'll hook up this to moving, <coughs> we'll create a new animation node sequence again, and we'll select it and just press Control w to duplicate it to create four nodes that we're going to use. Um, now the first one I'm going to have is EC female walk. Uh, we don't have a backwards animation for this character unfortunately. EC female left and EC female right. And we'll hook all these ones up as required. Now once again for these animations um, we do want them to be playing and looping for all of them. There we go. Now, just a bit of an explanation on the playing property. The playing property just defines where this animation is currently playing, so when it's ticked whether the current time is actually being advanced or not. Various different animation nodes have a method of playing animations. Some nodes are, for instance, blend by list, or you know, various other nodes actually have an option to play the active child. So when the node becomes relevant, the child that is getting blended is automatically played. In the case of UT Anim Blend by Idle, we do have this option. In the case of Anim Node Blend Directional, we actually don't have this option. So for Anim Node Blend Directional, we need to ensure that all the children of that are set to be playing if we do want them to play appropriately when this node becomes relevant. Or else all we do is get the first frame of one of the animations. Um, you also notice that these two nodes here have purple boxes surrounding them, whereas our Anim Node Blend Directional doesn't. So it's not a purple box, it's an orange box. Um, the, the orange box that surrounds these uh, represents the current blend. Um, so right now we'll see uh, we're fully blended to our idle animation. And if we actually drag this along here, which is our little blend controller, across here you can see that we're now blending to anim node blend directional and we're at zero degrees, which is forwards, so EC female walk is the animation we're blending towards. Now if I drag this along you'll see that the orange is kind of fading a little bit to various nodes, so you can see this one here is half orange, this one here is half orange. This is what happens when we're actually blending between two different animations. And you can see here our character is kind of doing a really funny walk. That's actually a combination of the forwards walk and the sideways strafe both being played at the same time. Now you notice when we switch between these, we didn't get that kind of fading option regardless of how close we got to the next node, it was always played at the full weight. That's because when we look at some of these uh, various animations, it doesn't actually make sense for them to be partially blended together. It doesn't make sense, we're not going to be idle and moving at the same time. But we could be going forwards and left at the same time, or backwards and right at the same time. Which is why some of these nodes, as you'll play along, you'll see that the blend strengths between each of them change, but for some of them, the blend strengths actually don't. So now that we've got this all set up, we've got our idle blend, our directional blend. Uh, we'll set this back because we want our default thing to be idle. Uh, if we just close this, and we'll open up our content browser, save the package, and I'll jump in game into my test map and you can see we've got a character here playing a idle animation, nodding her head a little bit and as we walk we get our walking animation we get our strafing animation and if we sort of go 
directionally like that, we get a combination of the two, which at the moment looks a little bit weird, but we'll start fixing that problem in the later tutorials. I uh, hope this tutorial has been useful to you, and good luck building your own animation trees. Hopefully you'll be watching the next couple as well. Cheers.